What's up, everybody? Welcome to Pixel Play SideQuest, your bonus content here on YouTube. My name is Adam, aka CS Radical. Joined as always, Mr. Jen and Chris Kalen, still sick, even though, you know, it's, it's, no, it's totally a few days later. It's not literally five minutes after we record the episode where we mentioned him being sick. No, 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 no. It's two days. He's still quitting on us. He's still not getting paid. That's another unpaid sick day right there. Yeah, that's two unpaid sick days. I agree. But, um, we got the unfortunate news. A couple days ago, I'm just going back to the wiki because I couldn't remember if it was, uh, oh no, it was way before that shit. Has already been that long? Damn. I guess the news came out a little bit later, but I guess, um, he passed away on the 1st of March. So it's now been, as we're recording another, uh, 11 days since then, it's the 12th right now. Obviously when you guys see it, so it's almost going to be two full weeks by the time this video comes out. Uh, Akira Toriyama, who most people will remember for Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. Um, he passed away at the age of 68. Shame. Just another month and change, and he would have made it to 69. Bullshit. The gods really <laughs> didn't like him. Beerus the Destroyer really was not appreciative of this man who brought so much joy to everybody's lives. Um, my exposure to him did start with Dragon Ball, although I don't think I really knew as much about him and his works until much later. Like, I... I saw Dragon Ball a little bit when I was like in my teens because they used to play it on a Cartoon Network. I never really got Teletoon. We always had the illegal satellite dish, so I was never watching the Canadian channels for the longest time. But uh, the original Dragon Ball series is where I first got brought to it. Didn't watch a lot of DBZ growing up. More of my experience with DBZ comes from Team Four Star and their Abridged series, which honestly is the better way to watch it, in my opinion, because it takes so much of the filler out and then also brings a brevity to that series that... You just can't get elsewhere. But I know um, the big one for both you and I would be Chrono Trigger, which the art was oh, yeah. greatly inspired by him. He also did stuff for Dragon Quest. Uh, he was part of Blue Dragon, which is a lesser-known Xbox RPG. Part of his stuff was also done with Jump Force, which was an anime-based fighting game. The most recent work that he was a part of and is yet to be released is the soon-to-be released video game um, Sandland. Or Sandlands? Is it Sandland or Sandlands? I can never remember. But uh, that uh, is a game that's yeah. to be released. I don't know if it's this year now or not. I don't know if it's got an official date. But that is the... Basically, it looks like Dragon Quest, but you're a tank kind of game, which looked amazing in the trailers that we saw at, I believe it was Summer Game Fest that they showed that off. Or it was the Game Awards. One or the other. I can't remember. But it was Jeff Keighley for sure. It was Jeff, yeah. But uh, that's the last... Man, side note, those developers got so much pressure on now because that's his last work. Like, that's the last game he's a part of. So uh, good luck with that, guys. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to be a bittersweet game when it releases, whether it's, well, hopefully if it's good, it'll definitely be bittersweet. I'm sure if it's not good, it'll just be bitter. Um, but yeah, with uh, when it comes to Akira, I my first um, content that I had basically had that, that it was his works was Chrono Trigger, as you mentioned. I didn't know it was his because when I played Chrono Trigger, I was 13 and I didn't really know things. I didn't even know much about Square Enix at that point or Squaresoft as it was at the moment. And you didn't realize uh, that Chrono was just a Super Saiyan with red hair. Yeah, yeah. Looking back, because I had a lot of the artwork, I had you know, player's guides. I had like all the different stuff for Chrono Trigger. It was my favorite game. It is still to this day, I would say my favorite game of all time. Um, and all the artwork I had looking back, when I then did discover, probably three years later, I was about 16. Um, I also had the Illegal Satellite, so had uh, Cartoon Network. Was that the one we had? Yeah. The Teletoon was the Canadian one? Yeah, so C Cartoon Network. Uh, there was Gundam Wing and then Dragon Ball Z was on. And I would come home every day from school. Me and all my friends were obsessed. We actually called each other in school by our character name. I was Goku. Everybody had like their different um, names. We'd do the different, you know, attacks at each other and all that. Um, but yeah, I, after Chrono Trigger and then I got into Dragon Ball Z, that's when I was like, wait a minute, this art style, I know what this is. And I was looking at my Chrono Trigger stuff and I was like, this is the same artist. Like the person who drew these characters is the person who drew these characters. It's, it's the same person. Like that's the, the it's, it, you know, his style. I mean, right off the bat, Chrono is basically Goku and Luca is basically Bulma. Like it's already yeah. right there. And, and then it's, like it's right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, he had a specific art style and it's crazy when I just had played Dragon Quest. I think it's 11. That that's the newest one that's out. It's the same art style. Like he never, 
deviated from that. Everybody had their look as manga with the specific hair and like it would be a different color and the colors were always ridiculous. It's like teal and like a red that doesn't exist in real life, blue, um, or maybe your hair would turn gold because you went Super Saiyan. Like there was, it, there was his style and it was so obvious that it was and it was so delightful for everybody that looked at it no one was ever upset that it was so similar every single time it was like new characters in the same universe the new sand what i can't remember what the heck the new game is yet sandland sandland looks like blue dragon looks like dragon ball z the main character just looks like majin buu mixed with like you know uh, like a ghost yeah yeah the main character of Dragon Quest XI was just Bulma's brother. Every time I played, I was like, this is just Bulma's younger brother who's out on a quest. But the thing is, is nobody was ever upset because it was like, I love this art style. It never gets old. Um, I would say the last thing that I actually like did that was f- f- with related to this art style was on um, Halloween last year. I did Dragon Quest Pumpkins because... It's just I couldn't not do like the bats and stuff like that that he had drawn um, as these pumpkin characters and stuff. Like it's just too delightful and like it's fun, it's adventurous, it's colorful. It can be badass as we saw with Dragon Ball Z. Um, It's some of the only DVDs that I actually still own to this day is the entire Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z sets that are on DVD. I was buying them as they were coming out in those blue and orange boxes back in the early 2000s because I was desperate to have this show and watch through it. And God, it was just so perfect. And you could just see the love that was put in to every drawing and every character design and everything that he did. Like... It was just too perfect. It was. It's just so sad that we're missing out now on such an art style that is so recognizable around the world. This isn't like just in Japan and stuff. Like yeah, this is I've legitimately everywhere. watched more than three hundred different anime shows over the course of my life. There are a lot of artists that I'm very infatuated with their stuff. There is not a person remotely close to being as recognizable as Akira Toriyama's art is. Yeah. It stands out. It just, you see it and you're like, that's his. You could show me any piece of art right now and I would pick out which one is his. And and it's like, some people are going to say, well, yeah, well, his stuff's really popular. I'm like, bro, like I look at art from some of the most popular shows on the planet. There are none nearly as obvious and recognizable as his. He is the, in my opinion, the most iconic anime artist out there. A hundred percent. I would agree with that a hundred percent because there's just nobody else has somehow managed to grasp that like extreme uniqueness in the drawings where it stands out so obvious so different from everybody else's it's still looking simple it's not like he's doing something crazy where everybody has a tentacle coming out of their head or something like it's simple yet so unique like i don't know it's just so sad to me yeah like there are studios all across you know the world that have made stuff and the closest I can get to is Studio Trigger, where you can you can definitely tell when a show of theirs is animated by them. But even then, like there are still cases where you could go, ah, that might not be Trigger. Like, the, and they're the closest I can think of because they're the ones that did like Cyberpunk Edge Runners, for example. But they've also done a bunch mm-hmm. of other shows that people are really really excited about. They did a uh, Kill a Kill, Gurren Logan. They've done a lot of different shows. Little Witch Academia is another one, and they have like different styles that they've done. So. But even then, you can still recognize most of their animation just based on how it's done. You can, you can get a pretty good grasp on it. But Akira Toriyama's is this case of, like you said, you can recognize it in an instant because it's never changed. And it's not like, you know, it's gotten old either. Like, it still works. I mean, look at up to date. Like, Dragon Ball Super is doing really, really well. You have Dragon Quest that is still going strong with that art style. You have Sandline that's about to come out. Dragon Ball Z had a new fighting game that Arc System Works did not too long ago, and it looked amazing. And that was still using his style, just with a slightly different coat of paint, but it was still that same art style. And those are so easy to recognize. And God, like it's it's one of those things that you go, how do you how do you do how does that happen again? Like I don't know if in my lifetime something like that can happen again. No. No, because like he started with Dragon Ball in the 80s 
and here we are in 2024, you know, talking about him and his art remained the exact same the entire time. It's timeless. Like you could show me this in a hundred years. You could have shown me it on a ancient piece of paper from a hundred years ago and it would have looked the same and would have been, it would have fit both a hundred years from now. It'll still look great. And a hundred years ago, it would have looked great too. Like it's such timeless art style that, that I, I don't know if we'll ever have anything like this ever again in our lives. I really don't know. So the ultimate question is who is the best character you ever drew? His have fun picking favorites. Oh, why? Why would you do this to me? Because we're talking fun. about how everybody is like. I'm trying not to make it sad. Similar... So I'm trying to make you agonize for a different uh, reason. God, yeah, I'm just gonna cry into my own brain now. Like, okay, so I have a huge soft spot for Chrono Trigger and Dragon Ball Z. Like, I was obsessed with these two things. They were my teen years. They represented me from basically when I hit puberty to when I graduated high school. I had Chrono Trigger and Dragon Ball Z everything. I was obsessed with both. So I can tell you right now it's going to come from those. It's going to be extremely hard to pick between, say, like Magus or Shala in like Chrono Trigger. Like, especially back when it was their character designs from 12,000 BC. I think it's 12,000 BC. Like, it was magical. It was whimsical, the drawings that that he had for them and the artwork that he did for them. But then you get Dragon Ball Z and you just have like Piccolo and Goku like just beating the crap at each other. And it's just the most amazing artwork that you you could put it as a black and white picture on my wall and I could sell it as that it's like thousands of dollar art. Like it's just too perfect. So I think I'm going to have to go with, you know what I'm going to go with from Chrono Trigger, I'm going to pick Shala and then from... Dragon Ball, God, so many good characters. But there's I a lot honestly, of good characters. Yeah, there's so many good characters. I, but I think I just got to go Goku. Like I think I just need to keep it, you know, right there. But there's so many. Like Piccolo, what an amazing, cool looking character. Even Frieza, even Vegeta. Um, God, I don't know. It just keeps go. Master Roshi, like come on. Um, like it's just there's so many good characters. But yeah, Shala for Chrono Trigger, and then. Goku. I couldn't pick Chrono and Goku because it's like, okay, so Goku got lost in time and got a sword and a cool teal looking, you know, wrap and he wears that and <laughs> same guy, same hair. So I, I can't do that. But yeah, those will be mine. What about you? Yeah, if I was going to pick between the two from Chrono Trigger, it would be Luca right right away. Like Yes. Like it was basically Balma without the bitch part of it. I loved yep. it. It was, it was just... Yep. Here's the inventor that's just going to make a bunch of random shit and you hope to God it doesn't kill you. It's great. Love that character. Uh, Dragon Ball, it's a toss-up. It really depends because um, if I was going to like the old school stuff, Frieza is the easy standout for me. Oh, yeah. Just like oh, just such... the pure menace that he drew for, for Frieza on that was just incredible. But also like for those that haven't partaken, if you've stopped after Dragon Ball Z, and yes, I'd say after Z because GT doesn't count anymore. We all agree on that. Um, yeah. If you haven't watched any of the new stuff, Beerus is a fucking amazing character. And he brings a shade of like, he has that bit of menace to him, but also that mixture of still being funny at the same time. Like he's able to balance the two in a way that I don't think any other characters really been able to do aside from like Vegeta, who who yeah. is the oh, master yeah. at being both an absolute piece of shit and massive comic relief. <laughs> he really is. Both in the he same really movie is. that Beerus is introduced in. Beerus becomes like one of my favorite characters. And then Vegeta having to subject himself into singing a song about bingo to try to get people to focus on him rather than what's going on is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in the entire series and is totally worth the watch just for that. I've still got to go and catch up with all the new movies. I've only seen Battle of Gods, which was the first movie they came back with. And then that started yeah. off where super came into still haven't watched the Frieza resurrection movie. And I haven't watched the new Broly movie either. So I've got some catching up to do at some point. They're both on my list to watch at some point, but that's on my list of like 200 other things in anime that I've missed over the last five years. So I'm like, Chris, my backlog is anime, whereas his is yes. game related. So that's true. 
But yeah, if, oh. if, and if I had to pick between the two, I'll I'll lean Frieza ever so slightly, but that's just for the time nostalgia bias. Yeah, yeah, that's a good pick. Really good pick. But as I say, a monkey is still a monkey. <laughs> I don't even know if that's what he actually says. I'm still in my team four star brain still going off. Support those guys too. God damn, they did the best job with that stuff. Man, they're so they good at it. But yeah, they um, did. any last thoughts on this? Like obviously rest in peace, Akira. Fucking legend. Absolute fucking yeah, legend. Yeah, absolute fucking legend. I honestly People, just people like, toss that word around, like legend, all the time. No, 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 no. This is the textbook definition of legend in, this, in, in this the industry he's from. A hundred percent. May even like, be the legend. Yeah, this is, like, it's so hard because this is, like, my childhood. Like, not my, sorry, not my childhood, my, my teen years. Like, me growing into an adult was... Dragon Ball Z, Chrono Trigger, his art represented everything that I loved while I was growing up during that time. And it's like, obviously, it's a big time in your life, obviously, to go through that like I was. But I don't know. It's just it still stands out to me today as just some of the most iconic and most important kind of like art for so many people. Um, And I think that honestly, like it's still going to keep going like i know obviously he's not going to be around to do his art and stuff now but i think that people are still going to be posting and looking at it re-watching um all of that and, and still just like probably aspiring just to even be like him so just absolute legend thank you for like all of the memories that in my teen years that you provided and helped me grow into the man that i was because if it wasn't for chrono trigger and dragon ball z i really don't think i would be who i am now i really do think that they had a part of my upbringing and shaping me into the man that i am today so thank you akira you will rap you're going to be missed absolute legend enjoy your time up there with kami akira i'm sure i'm sure uh, mr popo is going to do uh, the best he can up there for you <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, unfortunately, we don't have to. We don't get to end these too often on sadness. But I mean, when you got a legend who passes away, you got to talk about it. So there's no stopping that one. Yeah. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this. Like we said, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama, absolute legend in the industry, both in the gaming and the anime industry. But obviously, anime is the big one. Um, yeah, like it's he's gonna be sorely missed, and his works are gonna live on. Like I don't see that Dragon Ball is gonna stop. It's going to be still one of the biggest anime licenses out there ever. We'll continue to to do other things, but anything that's, that's going to be new is not going to come from his hand anymore, which is very sad. Because yeah. the, man, the man knew how to make characters that you would remember. You know, I, oh, yeah. I can think of so many off the top of my head, and that's even just, even just when Dragon Ball alone, I can still name so many characters and memorize exactly how they look because they're all unique. You asked me to go through a bunch of characters. Like, I can name characters, but I can't immediately, like, point them out. I have a pretty decent memory for that stuff. It, it's going to work at its best with his stuff because it's so easy to differentiate the two. Unless you're asking me to figure out uh, characters that almost look the exact same to Goku, and then in which case we might have a little bit of trouble over time. But don't worry about that. That's a uh, <laughs> that's that's a later problem. But absolute legend in the business, sorely missed, and shame that he's dying so young. Sixty eight isn't isn't old, but it's also not young. But it's also at that age where it's like, nah, you could have had some good more some more good years out of the man. Could have, could have done so much more. Yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. going to do it for this episode of the SideQuest, guys. Obviously, we don't like leaving on a sad note, but can't help it here. Obviously, on YouTube, here we are. Like and subscribe for more content. We will see you Wednesdays at noon for every podcast and obviously here at 5 p.m. Eastern for the SideQuest. So hopefully, I'll we'll have something nicer to talk about, although we could just be angry instead like we were on the podcast uh, this week. But We'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, there's always time for uh, somebody else to make us angry or make us laugh or whatever else is going on. But man, with Akira, made us feel a bunch of different emotions. And unfortunately, the last one he's leaving him leaving us with is is pure pure sadness and despair. But such is the case in life and death. But yeah, that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you so much for checking us out, and we will see you on the next episode. Bye bye for now. <laughs>